Lord, this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. God, we thank you, Lord God, that your name is greater than any impartiality. Your name is greater than any sickness. Your name is greater, Lord God. So we stand before you this morning to give you the glory and the honor and the praise because you are due that and more. God, we thank you. We ask you that you will bless this praise and worship service. Bless the man of God. Bless the word that he will bring forth. Lord God, we pray that Satan will be horrified and you will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen, amen. He's the great I am. Amen. As time was in and out, I'll take me to that place, Lord. To that secret place, Lord. Where I can be like you. Amen. How many of you want to be like Jesus on this day? Amen, amen. Hey, I am Dominique Johnson. I'm the pastor of Kingdom Life and the founder of the Urban CEO. And we want to welcome you here to a Kingdom Life live virtual worship service. And I just want to thank you for tuning in. Also, I want you to do this right now. Start your watch parties, tag somebody, share. Let them know there is a word from the Lord on today. Amen. Amen. Welcome to Kingdom Life, as I stated earlier, a place of truth, life, and community where our mission is to make disciples who are thoroughly equipped and fruitful in every good work. In short, we want to develop disciples that make a difference. Amen. Our vision here is to be a life-giving movement of mature believers who are ambassadors of Christ that transform culture and community. So we want to welcome you on today. This day is the Lord's day. Amen. Amen. I hope you're feeling good. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know who I'll go. I don't know if too many of y'all went to Central. If you did, don't worry about it. We, we gave y'all something to think about last night. Amen. The North East Ray gave y'all something to think about yesterday. Amen. A little local humor if you're here with me. Hey, check this out. Um, I want you to know everything that's going on. And so we're going to roll into our announcements. And I got one or two extra announcements. And then we'll get ready to get into this word, word this morning. Amen. All right, let's roll them, y'all. Let's roll them. Oh, thank you for bringing 21 day corporate fast. Amen. Amen. We end on Friday. Amen. So let me explain this now. Let me explain. Let's do this prayer of reflection during the day. We're reading the book of Proverbs. And what we're doing, remember the book of Proverbs, we're going to read it throughout the whole month. So that's a chapter a day. So that don't mean you start reading Proverbs on Friday. Amen. You go out to the 31st. Amen. Uh, limit your TV and social media to an hour. We should have been having some praying people. Amen. Uh, that's YouTube unless something pertaining to the gospel. I uh, hope you've getting your exercise in. I've been getting my exercise in. I hope you've been doing some type of movement. If you got some steps, go up and down the steps. No secular music. Amen. No fried foods, no sweet, no soda, sweet tea or alcohol. Alcohol includes wine. On Thursdays, we still do the fast, but we don't eat until at, at 1 o'clock or after 1 o'clock when we get through with our corporate fast. Amen. Uh, what's next, John Fleming? Oh, let me say this too before I get read the women of R. Take name. The fast ends Friday. That means you go all the way through Friday. That means you don't come out the fast until Saturday morning. Say amen, saints, on the, on the screen. Amen. Type it in now. Which means you can get up there that Saturday morning and eat you some pancakes then. French toast, I guess. Amen. Fry you some bacon then. But you ought to try to keep on, keep on going with what you're doing. Amen. Women are to <clears throat> Uh, a letter to my heavenly father, which is Saturday, January 23rd, 2021 through I mean, 11 a.m. So it's this coming up Saturday, 11 a.m. Check the Facebook group on how to RSVP, all right? I don't know how you put the RSVP, but check the Facebook group. Amen. Check the Facebook group. Mental Health Symposium will be, oh, okay. I'm like, whoa, that went quick. <laughs> It'll be uh, the first Saturday in February from 9 a.m. to 11.30. And what we want to do is raise awareness in church culture addressing transgeneration trauma, domestic violence, and destigmatizing mental health. Tell somebody, make sure that you're right in your mind. Amen. And tell them it's okay to talk about it with somebody professional. Amen. <laughs> I know sometimes we, we drew a lot of stuff. We're trying to keep moving. Amen. Oh, uh, church anniversary. Church anniversary. We got that one. Okay, church anniversary. Church anniversary is next Sunday. Hey, next Sunday. Hey, remember that we're asking everyone to give a special offering on that Sunday. We have things we want to do. We want to move the kingdom forward. 
This always jump starts our year. I want you to get to have a spirit of generosity. This year our theme is the ambassador life. So come on now, let's stop having a scarcity mindset. All right? I do want to, I do want to say this. Um, the heating center that has been opened by the, the, the city government, uh, we're going to be making donations to that, to there. But we also want to make sure that uh, if you get your opportunity to volunteer, they're looking for volunteers to come in. We're, coordinate, we're going to coordinate that, but if you want to take it upon yourself to contact them and, and go in, that's fine. You know, everybody say, hey, we're trying to find something to do. You have, we have plenty to do. Amen. And before I go, before I uh, go into this word, uh, we want to lift uh, Brother Desi Giles up, and um, that's Brother DJ, who's uh, the wife of uh, Tia Warner and Miss Shirley's uh, uh, son-in-law. I was going to say uh, grandson, son-in-law. Uh, he lost his grandfather, so we want to make sure we wrap our arms around the family during this time and move on. Hey, I want you to do this, man. Keep everybody, keep everybody you know, who you close to, whoever. Let's continue to pray. Keep them lifted up, amen. I got a call yesterday, one of my former Upward Bound students who I married almost 10 years ago. Uh, she, she, she transitioned and passed away due to complications of, of um, lupus and her, and her uh, COVID. And so we want to make sure we keep, keep, that, keep her husband uh, and just that family up in prayer. I didn't call her name, and I'll wait to do that. But I just, the reason why I thought about it is let's just make sure we, we show love for one another during this time. Amen. You got your Bibles, iPads, iPhones, Droids. That's what I, I don't know about y'all. Samsung on the, on the phones anyway. Samsung on the phone. Go to Acts chapter 2. We're going to continue our... We're going to continue through that. So I think, I think this is the word for at least, I know kingdom life for this time as we get ready to transition. Mm. As we're transitioning. I want to tell you this too. We're going to probably in the next month or two get ready to start up our, um, we're going to get ready to start up our, uh, first of all, our uh, registration or application process probably for ULA, Urban Leadership Academy. You do not want to miss this now. I'm telling you, you better ask somebody who's been through it and what it, what it has done. And also, we're going to have uh, probably, well, not probably, next month, we'll also do our first leadership intensive. And I'll let you know whether or not that's going to be uh, uh, virtual or uh, on Zoom or, or, or what. Amen. Got to try to find a way to do it where I won't be taxing John. So we may do it in person. We'll see. Amen. If you get, do you have Acts chapter 2? Acts chapter 2. I don't know about you. I love this weather, though. It could be just probably a little warm, but I like it because it's sun out. You go sit outside, put your something on the grill if you're grilling, however you want to do it. Or maybe early spring. I don't know about you. I don't, I don't need it to be 100 degrees. Amen. <clears throat> Acts chapter 2, getting at verse 1. And it says, When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Now there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the crowd came together and were bewildered because each one of them was hearing them speak in his own language. They were amazed and astonished, saying, Why are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we each hear them in our own language to which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Lib Libya around Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them in our own tongues speaking of the mighty deeds of God, and they all continue in amazement and great perplexity, saying to one another, What does this mean? 
But the others were mocking and saying, they are full of sweet wine. That sweet wine. <laughs> but Peter, taking his stand with the eleven, raised his voice and declared to them, Men of Judea and all you who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give heed to my words. Now, verse 41. So then and those who had received his word were baptized, and that day there were added about 3,000 souls. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for being an awesome God. We thank you for newness. We thank you for freshness. We thank you for a, 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 a breeze of your spirit. We thank you for new wine. We thank you, Lord, that we are still here to move forth your kingdom as ambassadors. God, circumcise our hearts that we may receive your words, our ears, that we may hear it and loose us to do your will, God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. On today, Lord, we are so, we're just blessed to be here, God. We're just blessed to raise up your voice, our voices, God, to give you praise. And we say hallelujah right now, God. So we thank you and we bless you in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you're standing up, reading, whatever you do, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to speak from this subject today. If, you, if you're writing it down, I want you to speak from the subject. For, the forecast is windy. The forecast is, is windy. It's windy. Pentecost was one of the feasts uh, of Israel. There were, there were five feasts uh, and, and, and five to seven feasts of Israel. Passover being the first one. And remember that Passover dealt with the, the Jews coming out, or the Israelites coming out of Egypt. And it represented that God was delivering them. And so they took a, uh, the, lamb, the blood of a lamb and, and spread it over the door. And then after they got out of Egypt, they came to Mount Sinai. And, and, and here at Mount Sinai, God gave them the law. And then another feast was in, incorporated. But it, was, it necessarily wasn't called... Pentecost. It wasn't called Pentecost. It wasn't called Pentecost until you got to the Greek language, right? And Penta, five, right? So it's 50. It really means 50. That's how Pentecost means, right? So, so it means 50. But in, in, to the Israelites, it was what you call the Feast of Weeks. Everybody said the Feast of Weeks. And, and what, what happened here, they, they, would, they would come around and everybody would be just celebrating. And if you study the Feast of the Lord, if you study the Feast of the Lord, they're around or they have prophetic meanings. They, they mean certain things for the New Testament believer, but also for those who still are, are what I would call Orthodox Jews. The, the, the feasts mean a certain thing. And so right here is uh, Moses, when they came out, gave them the law. But here's what they heard. They, they heard the rumbling of God. They heard the voice of God as in thunder. It's kind of interesting because the same thing here at the day of Pentecost, they heard wind. They heard, see, watch this. There's some, sometimes you got to hear something. Sometimes you don't have to hear something. And other from, you got to hear something from heaven. Sometimes we hear too much from, from, from earth, right? Nothing wrong with that, but we got to hear something from heaven. But notice this, at the, end, at, at the bottom of Mount Sinai, when Moses came now, he gave them the word written on stone tablets. Here it is. When the Holy Spirit came in the day of Pentecost in the New Testament, God tells us that way throughout the scripture. He would not give the right to the law on our hearts. So there's been a transition. Somebody say transition. And so what this? Here's the thing. You can't have a Pentecost till you have a Passover. What happens is, what that means is you can't, you, we can't be filled with the Spirit of God, or let me say this, uh, we can't claim the Spirit of God until we have been saved by God. So watch this, you can't put all where blood hadn't been. I want you to get this now, I know what you mean. Passover meant that I've been redeemed, I've been set free, amen? So what happens is we have people who necessarily hadn't had a Passover experience. Let me put it like this. Let me put it real simple to you. We have people who necessarily hadn't been saved by the power of God, by the blood of Jesus Christ, who wants to walk in the power of God. And so watch this. He says, you got to have Passover first. You got to get the lip, you got to get saved under the blood, and then I can fill you with my spirit. So you got to have Passover. And what happens is, this is what you have to understand. But what is going on here? What, what can we bring about from 
the, uh, this text. What is this text? Text has to teach us about it being a windy forecast. So, so first of all, what, what happens is it says that this. Let, let's, let's go to the scripture. I love the word of God. It says, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. I don't know about you all, but notice what it says here, the day of Pentecost had come. You, um, what I always not trying to understand, what caused it? What, what caused this? What caused this day? I mean, it was the right time. It was the right moment. And so what I got to understand is this, is that my first point is this. Sometimes you have to create the conditions for change. You have to create the conditions for change or to create the environment. You necessarily don't cause the change, but you can create a culture for change. So, so how did we get here? How did we even get here, Mama Jerry? We got here because if you go back to chapter one, which I preached last week, there were conditions for this, this to happen. So first of all, he told them in chapter one to go wait. Go wait till you get some power, right? Go wait for the promise of God. So I want to submit to you today that if we're going to see change, we're going to create an atmosphere for change, for our selling, then we got to be obedient, all right? So the first thing under this create thing, you got to be obedient. What were the conditions? They were obedient. They waited for God. They, they did what they told them to do. And see, watch this. We want to be, see change, but we don't want to be obedient. We don't want to be obedient. And notice what the text says. He said they was in one place. They was in one place. Can we just get together? Can we get on one accord? So guess what my other condition was? That not only were they obedient, they were in unity. They were in unity. See, if we're saying, Lord, brain change, let me ask you are we obedient to the things that God has asked us to do? Are we obedient to the thing that God, let me tell you, let's, let's forget ask. Are we obedient to the thing that God told us to do? Lord, what's going to create this? Because God got some things he got set up for time. He said, go wait. And that's, that's where 120 people say, okay, we're going to wait. Some of us are waiting and we're not doing nothing. So what, 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 what was the other con part of the condition? They were praying. Oh, see, we don't fell, we don't fell into, as Christians, we don't fell into, oh, I'm tired, we just praying. But you got to get somewhere and really believe what your prayers is. You got to get somewhere and really call heaven down. And you got to, as the old folks, I'm going to hold on to the horns of the altar. And I ain't going to let go, God. I'm going to come here every, if I got to come here every day and pray. And guess what they were doing? Ten days they did this. Ten straight days they were holed up together. 120 people in, in obedience to God's word, unity with each other, and praying. See, we want to suddenly, but we don't want to obey, and we don't want to be on one accord. And you show up when we get here, we, watch this, we, oh, hey, hey, no, no, both shot. I just heard God say, they remember when Peter them was in the garden, they, they fell asleep on Jesus. Are we falling asleep on Jesus? He said, hey, could you not tarry from, with me for one hour? Come on, we got saints in the Lord who can't even just stay focused for an hour. Come on, I ain't picking at nobody today, but some of us should be past the five or ten minutes. That's all I'm saying. He said, hey, I'm in my diet's time right here. You couldn't, you couldn't stay up one hour with me? If you can't pray on your knees and sit down, get up and walk around. Do something. Do jumping jacks and pray. Do something. I know we all sit there and sometimes go to the third heaven. But every now and then you got to shake yourself. Amen. Let me get a why. Because my family is depending on it. I'm creating an environment. I'm not necessarily I'm making a change, but Lord, I'm going to create an environment for you to come in and do what you got to do. Yes, got to create the environment. Set the culture right. Let me tell you something. This is what Kingdom Life is. We're a place of worship, prayer, and the word. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to create the environment. Here's the thing, though, John. Sometimes the reason why we don't want to create the environment, this is stuff that people can't see. See, this ain't, no, this ain't the glory right here. You being obedient don't really say that sometimes get you no kudos. See, they praying somewhere where nobody can't see. I don't know about you all. The other day, Melissa Smith and myself, we were here. And, and, and Ingrid, I, I know you work downtown. I don't know if y'all were close to it. I started hearing stuff outside. Started 
So I thought somebody was like, I thought she was moving something throughout the, throughout the church. And I was gonna say, hey, you need some help? I thought she was literally like, you know how you, you, you can be moving something sometimes, like somebody clicking? I said, hey, you moving something? What's going on? Now keep in mind, if you somewhere, make it, it's like it is right now. Oh, y'all gotta get this. She said, no. And what happened was, she was getting ready to come around, you know what, she was, she was eating on something, she said, it's Helen. I said, what? Y'all got it. See, you meant, see, we didn't see the condition. The condition didn't look right. We couldn't see what was going on in the atmosphere, but hell started coming. It was a suddenly. So you can't necessarily see what you see. Come like this. What's going to cause the change, we ain't going to get all the glory. But what I do know, some came out, it was peace as hell that day. With the sun straight out. But no more than like 70, or not even 70 degrees. It was a suddenly. Didn't even look like it was going to happen. But see, sometimes, oh, sometimes what's unsettling to us has been something going on in the atmosphere. It's been some more. See, we call it a suddenly, but it was, it was 120 people praying for 10 days straight. See, we used to hearing the suddenly, but so, see, there's no overnight success. What it is is people working hard, and people being disciplined. If they, see, what happens is the suddenly come as a result of a combination of things. You tell them, baby, you, it, it was suddenly you, but I was on my face for this one. I cried out to God for this one. Huh? You seem like I got here overnight. Trust me, now nah, it was a pretty sleepless night. Come on, somebody. Your marriage is so good. Look at him, let me tell you something, baby. There's plenty of days of the prayer and some, and, some, and some crying out and some understanding. Hey, we don't get nowhere suddenly. It comes suddenly, but there's some stuff working behind the scenes. Amen? Yeah. Some stuff working behind the scenes. So if we're going to create a culture of change, we're going to create an environment, then there got to be something going on behind the scenes. There got to be some prayer and some unity. Amen. So then watch this now. So we create the conditions for change. And right there, so now, point, point number two, because we keep talking about we won't change. Point number two, we got to be receptive to the winds of change. Got to be receptive to the winds of change. Everybody wants something fresh and new. Hmm? It was John 3 and 8 says, John 3 and 8 says, the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it, but do not know where it comes from. And where it is going, so is so is everyone who's born of the spirit. I want to lift up from here the principle uh, of, of wind. You can't tell. So the wind right here, if you haven't figured figured it out yet, let me slow down. Is uh, an analogous of the spirit of God. So what, he, what John is saying here in verse three, when he's talking in verse three in chapter in John, he said, "Hey, you, you, we can't tell where the wind going. We can't tell where the spirit going." But here this, here this. Watch this. We can't see the wind, but we can see the effects of the wind. You can feel the effects of the wind. See, this is going to be something you can't necessarily see, but you're going to have to, you're going to, have to understand. But what I mean by this, you can't discern it unless you're in the spirit of God. You're going to feel the effects. You're going to see the effects. Does anybody want the wind to come? Somebody say forecast windy. The forecast is windy outside. Tell them there's a lot of sun, S-O-N, and wind. Come on now. So watch this. What does wind do? The wind, the wind right here, it's gonna blow out some old things. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We're gonna, gonna tell. The wind, see, watch this. When wind comes, it uncovers some stuff. You ever had someone on the ground, you didn't know it was there to, to guess what? The wind blow it away. So guess what done been blown away right now? One of the things that's been blown away and uncovered so the angry, is our idolatry. Somebody say idolatry. We done made an idol out of this, out of some of our stuff. We done made an idol out of government officials. We done made an idol out of the church building. We done made an idol. Hear me now. I, I want to be in one place I want to call. Don't get me wrong. I want to be bad. We done, but we done made an idol out of how we used to do some stuff. And God, see what God said, I'm going to blow something away because I can't blow nothing in until I blow something away. Come on now. And so the wind of God is coming and saying, I'm getting rid of your old stuff. I'm tired of it anyway because you done held on to that. You hold on to that too long. I can't do nothing new because you won't let go of nothing old. Hey, fresh wind. See, we, we say all this stuff in colloquialism, but God, guess what? The wind will destruct some stuff. 
The wind, uh, he, it's a disruptor. So on this day, he said, guess what? Here come a sound from heaven. I don't know about you, but I want something from heaven to come through here. Watch this now. What the, what the wind going to do? It's going to blow out your old, mind, your old paradigms. Paradigms, for those out there, is only just a good word for mindset. They're going to they blow out your old paradigms and, your, and our old systems. You say, hey, 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 it wasn't that that was bad. It is that, I ain't, that, that, that it's, no, it's no longer the season for that anymore. I'm blowing away. Somebody just blow. Just blow like that. Fresh wind. Fresh wind. See, the wind, see, uh-uh, I'm coming through here. Guess what? Here's the thing. You can't control this. I'm going to do what I want to do with this thing. Now, how, hold on. Let me say this. You can quench it, but if you quench it, you'll miss out. If you resist against the change, you'll miss what I'm trying to do in your life and in the life of the church. Amen. Amen. What else I'm going to blow out? I'm going to blow out religiosity. I'm bringing relationship back. I'm blowing over religiosity out. I'm blowing your three songs. And I'm blowing all that out the way. Guess what you have to do? You have to give and seek me daily. Now, nah, I'm going to blow all that. I'm going to mess up your little routine. Because when well, you got too comfortable in your routine, I want you to now go from routine back to relationship with me. I'm blowing all this out of the way right now. I got a new thing. It's amazing we preach about a new thing. God going to do a new thing. But we ain't receptive of the new thing. You got to be receptive of the winds of change. Mess up your whole system. Mess up your whole life. Amen? Okay, so watch this now. Where does the wind blow in? So if it blow away something, it blowing in something. So if it blow out an old mindset, guess what I mean? It's going to blow in a new mindset. Which means I now got to see things how God seen. And the Titus, it tells us to be renewed by the spirit of our mind. Why this now? Romans say be transformed by renewing. I know what I was saying. I didn't misquote it for those out there. Titus, he comes back and say, by the washing the regeneration word and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Which means now there's, there's something that the word in the spirit hooks up and it renews my thinking. In other words, I'm going to get you out this corner thinking. I'm going to let you see that I really can do uh, a seemingly above Above all that we can ask, wish, or think. I'm going to let you really see this. He, guess what is he blowing in? If he blowing a new mind, or blowing out a new mind, a new, he blowing in new systems. You got to do this thing a new way now. I know you used to go around the corner, up the hill, over yonder, but now I ain't doing that no more. Let me tell you something. The only thing constant is change. You hear me? The only thing that's ever constant is change. Think about that now. Seasons going to keep changing. Wait. <laughs> People going to change. The only thing constant is change. What else? So what else he going to blow in? He going he gonna, to he gonna blow in fresh vision. I got to blow in a new, I got to blow in a new way for y'all to see this thing now. I got to blow in a new way for y'all to see this thing. I want you to see this now. I'm blowing in something new. Notice this, when the wind came in, it opened up their vision. May I suggest to you that in this season, you're going to hear new things and see new things. When the Spirit of God blows through, come on, y'all, come with me this morning now. Come on with me as I stimulate your mind and stir your heart. Come on now, come on. He, he, he's going to blow in. But I like about it, though, like I said, he says, a sound coming from heaven. I don't know about you, but that's going to be a new sound. I ain't trying to be cliche. It's a new sound. Why? Because, because a new sound precedes a new thing. I'm going to blow away all that stuff that I'm not doing anymore. I'm going to blow it away. I'm going to blow away your little... Your, your ideology. I'm going to blow away all that. And guess what? On the social justice tip, I'm here to blow away racism. I'm here to blow away you being discriminated because social economic stuff. Some of y'all around here, here because you got your little new job, you being funny to people and all that. Because I'm blowing it all away. I'm blowing it away. Whoa! Who want the winds? Somebody say, I want that fresh wind. I want a fresh wind to come through, Lord. Matter of fact, God, I'm receptive of it. 
I'm going to receive it. If, it. if it's going to glorify you, I might not like it right away, but mess up my whole agenda every night. You ever had some plan and God just came and messed up the whole agenda? That was a fresh wind. He said, you had it going one way, but I'm going a new direction right now. Got to be receptive to this thing. But here's the thing I noticed. Notice this, Sister Ingrid. He says that not only did they hear the wind, they saw some stuff. They saw clothes. They said they saw tongues of cloven fire over their head. Wow. Man, God on my, this supernatural. Man, I was thinking, old John. I was like, this thing just didn't stay put. You know the worst thing that can happen in a forest fire? The worst thing that, huh? Come on now. Huh? The worst thing that can happen in a forest fire is for wind to come. But, 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 but right there, right here, this ain't a bad thing. If we want the fire to flow, if we want the, if we want the fire to spread, Oh, he said, I want this thing to spread. So I'm bringing a wind through here. I don't want it on just one person. I want this thing to blow on three, four, five. I want it to blow on a whole nation. I want it to blow on your neighborhood. Oh, he said, you can't contain this because the wind blowing. Oh, let the wind blow, God. Set us all on fire, God. Connect us all. Tell somebody to connect the dots, God. Come on now. Set me on fire so I can set somebody else on fire, God. Set us all on fire here. Blow, Lord. Blow. Hey, it's windy. It's windy. He said, oh, no, 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 no. See, what? Oh, thank you. I heard it. I heard it. He said, see, religion will put the fire out, but relationship will let this thing blow. You can't contain. See, the problem has been we've been contained and trying to contain what God want to do. He said, no, you can't contain this right now. You can, if you quench it, you'll miss it. If you fight against what I'm trying to do, you'll miss what I'm trying to do in your life and in the life of the church. Ooh. Now hear me now, I'm not talking about when we get back in church now, we just have a disorder service. I ain't talking about we walking out here cartwheeling and flipping, backward flips and all that. But there's going to be a day. Hey, I don't know about you. I just hold on to the hope. Watch this now. Hold on to the hope, but I ain't staying now. Hold on to the hope where well, I can see you run around this joker a little bit now. I ain't going to be mad at that now, but it's going to be time to set some order now. They're going to mean you just go do whatever. But I'm glad. I want to see you run around when we get back in. He said, guess what? Y'all been holding the fire, and I've been trying to spread the fire. I'm blowing. Guess what? See, guess what? Oh, I heard him again. Some of us hadn't been on fire until this disruption came. You ain't never prayed like you prayed till this disruption came. You ain't never been in your word like that. And the one of us who truly hunger is saying, fill me up, Lord. Some of us still fight and trying to go back. He said, be receptive of what I'm bringing in your life. Be receptive of it. Hey, I change. I'm shifting some stuff. I ain't doing it like that no more. Just blow, just blow. Windy, God. Mm -hmm. So, so after we create the conditions for change through prayer, unity, and obedience, then, then we got to be receptive of the, the winds of change. But watch this, watch this. My third and final point, as I get ready to get out of here, after we do all that, we got to communicate words that change. Uh, you got to communicate words that change. Notice this, notice this, John 7 and 38 says this, he who believes in me, as the scripture said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. That's all of us, that's not just preachers. Watch this now, as I had the conditions, as I don't feel with his spirit, then my words should cause something to happen. I don't have to be, I don't have to have a title of preacher behind, in front of my name, pastor or nothing. If I'm filling this spirit, out of my belly going to flow rivers of living water. So notice this, when it, when, it, when it came, it said that Peter stood up that day and began to speak. That Peter said, Peter said, no, 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 we ain't drunk. We ain't drunk. Watch this, though, watch this. Watch this. We must have language that connects with people. 
Because if I'm not mistaken right here, Dick, it says, it says they, 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 they were speaking in their own language. He said, first of all, when the wind came with the fire God, that fire burnt some stuff away. They then began to hear them speak in their own language. So we got to start speaking language that connects with people. Watch this now. Sometimes, I'm not, I'm not telling you to be carnal, sometimes you can't speak church and, church and needs with people who ain't never been to church. Some people don't know what the anointing is. We know it because we've been in church. You're going to have to say the power of God. They can, they can, they can recognize the power of God. There are sometimes, even though I love to talk theological language and talk about Christology and pneumatology and the, anthropology, uh, the anthropological co construct of whatever, but the truth of the matter is, hey man, human beings got this construct. Even though I like to talk about the incarnation and kenosis, which is called the internet of God, I just got to sometimes say, hey man, God emptied himself. Come on now. But watch this, you can't go in in, in an accounting firm talking about, hey, blah, 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 you're going to have to talk some numbers in there. What I'm saying is we got to have the gospel in a way where people can grab it. You gotta, we got to learn how to see what this is. Let me, give you, let me give you a little theology here. What this is is saying that the gospel don't only belong to the Jews, it's cross-cultural. The gospel is all don't belong to your little sect. There's a different way of hearing some. So what I'm saying is, guess what? There's different cultural and ethnic stuff that we got to deal with. Amen? And what has happened is, let me go and touch on this. What happened is a certain group of people got a hope to the gospel, and what they felt like is, if you didn't do it like them, it was wrong. No, the gospel transcends, it can drop into your culture and assimilate to it, so to speak. And what I mean by assimilate, I'm not talking about sin. I'm talking about to meet you right where you are. And but just because, guess what? I got a little bit more rhythm than you, don't mean y'all follow where I'm going. Don't mean I'm wrong because we get up and shout. Amen. Hey man, just cause you quiet, I ain't gonna say you ain't got no power. Just let you 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 worship God in your culture the way He put to, and guess what? We got a little rhythm. We gonna do it in ours. We on two and four, y'all on one and eight, whatever it is. Amen. Follow me. Amen. Amen. Ish, I'm out. So watch this. It also connect racial. So notice what it's saying. People from different cultures say, we hear in our own language. How can this be? Now, there are two, 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 two gifts of tongues. Let me tell you this real quick, because I know some people think it. So let me teach you real quick. So there is the supernatural gift where people can hear in their own language. Then there's what I consider, as I study, what you call a prayer language, which is now nobody understands it, but 1 Corinthians 14 says, it builds up my spirit. So Paul said, I pray with the understanding and I pray with uh, understanding. But my spirit understands and it edifies me. And let me say this, people may disagree. Everybody has that ability. Everybody might not operate in the gift, but everybody can have a prayer language. Mm, I can, I'll teach that a little later. Because the reason is when you have the gift, then the gift of interpretation goes with that. They're one and the same. If I'm praying in it and you don't understand it, then I'm praying for me at the moment. You just let me edify me. Amen. So watch this. We connect also across social economic. So here's the three things we got to connect. Cultural and ethnic, racial and social economic. The gospel crosses all those lines. See, without language, you can't connect. So you have to learn the language of the people and connect with them with that language. So God knew during the day I got a fresh wind coming in. So when the wind come in, I got to know how to guess what? There's different people here to connect with. Which you, here's the question, why are all these people here in Jerusalem? Because of the feast. So God said, I'm going to pick the opportune time where I got people from all over the world and when it come down, they can hear the gospel. After I connect, after I connect, watch this. We must speak words that exalt God and edify the believer. 
Notice what it says. It says, they hear what? Them praising God. In a, get, talking about the wonders of God. Talking about the wonders of God. Somebody, are you, do you ever talk about the wonders of God? Watch this now. First Peter 2 and 9, if you're taking notes. It says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Or people for God's own possession. We usually stop right there, Mama Jerry, but the rest is important. He says, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So in other words, when this fire come and it change your tongue, you won't be complaining all the time. You will be exalting God. You will be hearing about how God, let me tell you what God did for me. Let me tell you what God did for my mama. Let me tell you what God did for my daddy. Maybe we ain't getting nobody because we complaining and moaning and we ain't saying, yet, you know, we ain't still saying, how great is our God? In the midst of chaos, he's still good. In the midst of a pandemic, he healed me. Yet, you got to start talking about the glories of God. You got to proclaim his excellencies. Ain't nobody coming to God with you complaining and moping all the time. They say, wait, how we hear them talking about God in their own name? Speak words that edify. Speak life. Amen. I ain't telling you to fake it. I'm telling you to have a joy so deep down in your belly that when all hell breaking loose, you still got a praise on your tongue. I'm talking about back A. Whatever going on, knee messed up. I still give him glory. Still give him glory. He said, we hear them talking about, the th see, that was a fresh wind to do. Some of us need a fresh wind in our life. You need to be set afire again. We don't got stale. Ain't nothing better to burn than somebody that's dry. Lord, send some fresh wind in here. You know, I shake you up. You got too humble. You hadn't prayed with me. And you, hadn't even, you don't get up in the morning like you used to. Amen. You roll over and, and turn on the, the broadcast, turn at 10.30. You turn in at 11.15. Where's your fire? It's your fire. They're talking about I, can't con I just can't connect through the TV. You connect through the TV any other time. Amen. Fight it. Kill your flesh. Had to kill mine to kill our flesh. Lord, fill me up. You tell me to wait. I'm going to wait right here. All right, let me let me let me let me battle this thing out, Pastor. I know it's on a hard. I know it's understand. But Lord, guess what? The cross was too. Let me kill my flesh and go and sit in front of this TV here. Lord, I don't like it. What we need to be doing is Lord pray. Lord, let this thing in. See, we we pray about the wrong stuff. Instead of saying, Lord, in this thing now, I'm going to hold on now. I'm going to hold on. But Lord, come on, bring something in. Whether, whether it's vaccine, if you don't want to take the vaccine, that's on you. Whatever it is, Lord, have it where we can get back together every now and then, God. But until then, I'll do what you allow. At least you let the table with your own family. Amen. Say so you're a chosen race. Watch this now. So we got to start speaking the word to edify. But here's the other thing as I, as I get ready to get out of here. Watch this. Under communicate words that change. We must speak words that challenge and convict. If you notice this, Peter stood up. He said, wait, 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 let me explain to y'all what's going on. So this is going to be the challenging part. He said, we ain't drunk. I ain't filled with wine. Not the one you're thinking about. I'm filled with something, but it ain't that wine. Look at somebody tell me, it ain't that wine. <laughs> Not right now. Particularly while we fasting. It ain't that wine. I don't feel, but it ain't that wine. Huh? I don't feel it. Something else got control of me. <laughs> Something else. They said, they must be drunk. See, see what right this. You got to be so filled that people going to say they crazy. You got to have crazy faith. You got to stand up and guess what? Your whole demeanor got to change. The people got to be like, they crazy. They just, believe, they just still going to church, believing God, showing. He said, yeah, yeah, I got crazy faith. I got, I got something that's crazy. He said, guess what? So Peter, Peter had to deter, so tell them, brothers, hold on. This was, is this what was God said he was going to do in Joel too. He said he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Not just men, not just young and old. He going to give some women his power too. Come on now. That means you're going to have to listen to some women tell you some stuff every now and then. Come on now. He said, I'm going to pour out all flesh. 
But what I like, though, what I like about it, though, Mama Jerry, that's why I, I added in verse 41. Y'all want to know what the end of it was. They got, not all, they're not, they're not one only challenged. Peter preached and they were convicted. So verse 41 says, what, what, what does it say right here? It says, so then those who had received his words were baptized. And that day, they were added about 3,000 souls. What I liked about it when Peter was preaching, if you go back up and read a little, a little earlier, he says, he says, they say, what must we do? What must we do to be saved? Peter said, I know what, be saved from this perverse generation. Be saved from this perverse generation. See, the winds of change ain't gonna come through. 3,000 people. 3,000. In one day. All because it was windy. <laughs> All because the spirit was there. All because the spirit is there. I want you to understand that. He said, this promise is for you and your children and all who are far off. For our Lord will call to himself. I want you to get this now. Um, but, but Sister Jerry, D, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, some, 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 some still want to let me go right here, though. Some, some still want to let me go. I got I to gotta say this right here. Like, it challenged them and convicted them. <coughs> John, if you... I know, I know, uh, Elder Ivy mess with me sometimes. And he, he, he say I can be a little long-winded, got to get the, get the gavel, I understand that. I, you know, I, I do a little teach, I a little talking trip out as y'all know. But, but, but I noticed something right here. I noticed something. Um, Peter, when you read this speech, it, it didn't, it didn't take 40 minutes. It, it, it probably didn't take about, Three minutes for him to say that 3,000 people got saved. It, it, I don't, I'm trying to figure it out. Like, maybe some of the stuff we're doing ain't necessary. But, but, what, but what brought this about? I, I want to submit to you it was about the conditions. I want to submit to you that it was the 10 days before he spoke. <laughs> maybe we won't have to put so much physical or human effort in if we were to get on our face. Maybe with the change we're looking for will start in the prayer closet. Come on now. He said, get what? He got up. He said, oh, no, 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 not this day. It's a fresh wind, and I'm full of fire. You better get it. And when I speak, you're going to catch fire too. I want to, Lord, if I got, see, what this. Sometimes we want to be all nuanced and stuff. And y'all know I teach my minister how to parse and do hermeneutics, but I teach him this too. Everything starts in your prayer closet. Everything starts on your knees. Everything starts in, in, in communication with God. Maybe we done programmed him to death. And he said, ain't no fresh wild, fresh fire because your program got me locked in. Your program got me lock, locked in where I can't move. Maybe we got to go moving from program to prayer and then I'll show up. Three minutes, 3,000. Maybe, depending on your reading speed, when you read it, maybe five to seven minutes. One too much longer. That's it. Well, Peter had been in the presence. Oh, Peter had been in the presence praying. I, I had to add the third P in there. Peter had been in the presence praying. Watch this. He got one more P that produced power. <laughs> so when I'm in the presence praying, I can then have power. And then men will be convicted and get a soul to Christ. It all starts with setting the conditions first. Do we have to do something? Yes, we got to do something. Yeah, we got to do something. But everything we do should be preceded in prayer. You got to proceed. So guess what? Guess what? Guess what? We, we, we should be praying. Know what your prayer should be on Sunday? And I got, Lord, give pastor a word. Lord, let the people hear a word. Let it be anointed, God. Lord, I need a word too. Yes, I need a word, but God, let people get saved, God. 
Guess what? Even if, if you tune in today, Lord, this way, don't just pray for me. Lord, let the men of God or the women of God have a word for the people on today. They don't have a word for the body of Christ. They don't have a word for people who ain't saved. But we keep heaping a whole, Lord, give me, God, just help me. I ain't mad at that. Pray for yourself. I get that. I get it. But do you pray for the people of God to have a word that would convict and change people's heart? Or are you still just praying for, for, for just yourself? Lord, give a word, God. We need a word on the day. Don't let the men and women of God be distracted that have to preach the word. Give, do you pray that the word have free recourse? Or you got your grade book out trying to see whether or not somebody don't preach a good sermon today. Maybe we ain't preaching a good sermon because ain't nobody praying for us. Word on the day. Get your great book. I ain't mad at it. We all know that people, okay, yeah. But do you pray? Hey, Amen. I don't see people in Stone Fort churches with no education. Just could talk and the power will fall. And they just they slain in the spirit. And I seen drunks right on the on the at the at the time get saved and delivered. And I ain't telling you what I heard. I'm telling you what I seen with my own two eyes. I see somebody coming in straight with their sexual identity and come in right there. And I was right there at the altar and they got free off a of word because guess what? The saints used to pray like that. He said, I'm blowing it up. I'm blowing everything out because y'all got sidetracked. You got sidetracked. And I winked at it for a while. And I wasn't mad at you. See, but I got to bring something else fresh back in here. I winked at it for a while. You had good church. You had real good church. But I brought this wind to show you where you're real at. I brought this wind to let you see that you really weren't, you really weren't clinging on to me. You were clinging on to your traditions. I'm bringing something fresh to you now. I want you to start getting ready, worrying about souls again. At least get them in the church and then disciple. I want you to get back, worried about the Lord. I want you to worry about the pole you see. I want you to worry about these children not having enough laptops to do the education. There's a mother out there trying to feed eight children right now. It's, 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 it's winning out here. You, what you crying about? I want your soul back right. I want the main thing to come back to the main thing. I allowed it for a reason, but now I'm stirring you up. And I won't win and I won't fire. I'm proving to you right now that guess what? The church ain't got to be open. The building, so to speak, ain't got to be open for people to get saved. You get them saved on your job, through your lifestyle, and you're going to have a word for them. You're going to save it in the grocery store. You and your Facebook to give the gospel for at this time. Everybody can be an advantage. If it ain't number six, let me tell y'all how good God is. Use that keyboard for something else besides spreading junk and gospel. It's a fresh wind. It's a fresh wind. I want to get you a fresh fire. If this is you on the day and you know that, guess what? It's time for a change in your life. The way you've been doing it ain't working. I'm talking to somebody who don't know Jesus as their Savior. Lord, I need a change. I need fresh wind. I keep trying to do this thing and I keep kicking the kid to prick. I keep knowing this. Guess what? See, what this is what the enemy does to him. I'm here. He let her go for a little while. Oh, I'm back straight. And then you hit a brick wall and hit a star back over. I want to give you a fresh wind. I wanna he want to blow that old person away and blow in a new thing and fill you with his spirit. If that is you on the day, I want you to pray this prayer with me. I want to say, Lord, I repent. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my sins, Lord. I want to be made anew. I believe as that first Corinthians 15 said so that you suffered, Lord God. You suffered on the cross and you were buried, and three days later, you got up with all power in your hand. You now sit at the right hand of the Father, 
Make an intercession for me, God. Save me on today, God, and fill me with your spirit. Thank you for saving me, God, and filling me. In your son Jesus' name, amen. If that's you and you want, you want the change, you receive that change, I want you to text salvation or either, yeah, text salvation. Or even if you're making a recommitment to God on the day, I want you to text salvation to 478-254-7774. 478-254-7774. I want to pray this prayer for the old believers. This is prayer for believers now. Your relationship is intact with God and everything with God. Let us have the conditions of obedience, unity, and prayer. Let us be receptive to the change you want to bring in our life. God, I understand that we all mourn different, God. And we're still mourning the past and what church used to be, God. But give us fresh new ideas. Let us be receptive with a new vision. God, thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for being patient. I know we grumble. I know sometimes we want to go back. But thank you for fresh wind. Fresh wind that spreads fresh fire. And Lord, let out our bellies and out of my mouth become words of edification and encouragement to those who don't know you or even those who may. Fresh fire, God. Here, Bo Shanta. Fresh fire. It's windy, God. We need the wind to spread this fire. So we thank you, God, in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Here, Bo Shanta. Here, Bo Shanta. Here. Here, Pentecost, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yeah. Hey, if, you, if you've been rocking with us, it may be your first time tuning in to Kingdom Life. Y'all know that we're about community empowerment with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I got a fresh fire in me to preach this gospel. Everybody know I do leadership, team, and all that, but it's the gospel of Jesus Christ, God. Well, I've been, man, it shall be, it's the power unto salvation. And that's true. And you and hear me say this. If you wish to be a part of our movement, this community of life-giving, mature disciples of Jesus Christ, if you want to be a part of our movement, want to join with our church, and we can do a new member orientation through Zoom, uh, well, now I want you to text JOIN, J-O-I-N, text JOIN to 478 Two five four triple seven four. Matter of fact, it's time for you to get planted somewhere now. I, there are plenty of good churches in May. I won't say that I know no other better place. But what I can say, I believe that this is a good place for the word that the word of God, the worship of God, and the works of God go forward. Text join, join with us on today. We can do your new members. We can move you in. You can still uh, be part of auxiliaries that they meet and, and all those things. We meet social distance. We're master. We do that. I'm talking about our auxiliaries now. We're not being back at the church yet. Amen. So text join there. Become a member today. Amen. Amen. It's not time for our offering. Amen. A little Lord, a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Hey, fresh wind. Fresh wind. I want you to give, I want you to give generously on the day. I want you to still, next week, we'll give our off, offering for the um, church anniversary. Uh, the media team has put an envelope on there for church anniversary. If you want to, I know some people are like, I want to go and get this out of my pocket now. I want to go and get it out of my hand, amen. So there's an envelope on there for church anniversary. We just like to see how much was for that. It's going to go in the same pot. But I want you to sow a seed on the day according to how you've been blessed and been challenged, but just how you've been blessed by the word of God. Let's be generous, y'all. Let's, let's get generous. Let's break this spirit of, 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 of I want to say, lack of poverty or whatever. And we do that through being generous and being good stewards. So let's, let's give a good offering on the day to, to further the kingdom. Amen? 
uh, here go our four ways to give. Number one is Givelify. Number one is Givelify. You search for Kingdom Life Inc. Search for Kingdom Life Inc. on Givelify. All right. Number two is PayPal. It's paypal.me forward slash a kingdom life. Paypal.me forward slash a kingdom life. Number three, so I cash out. My cash tag is dollar sign kingdom life maker. Dollar sign kingdom life maker. And number four is by mail. And you mail to P.O. Box 4281, Megan, Georgia 31208. Let me say this, if you wish to, you know, I know people have different thoughts and beliefs on this. I'm not, I'm just saying that. If you wish to get your record of keep, keeping, uh, we, we will email those out to you. Uh, Sister Abby will email it, so we need the right email, but we're going to use what you put on file. If you give to Givelify, Givelify actually gives you your year-end your, your statement to make, amen? And all other stuff will be emailed to you. We got to have the right email, all right? But so we'll do, do that. Don't forget, let me say this too. <laughs> they laugh at me. But on, on uh, what is it, Cash App, make sure we have the right name. Like I said before, we can't send it to Lulu55. Amen. Make sure we have the right name. All right, well, I, hope, I hope this word blessed you on today. Tune in Wednesday to Word Wednesday. Tune in Wednesday, I'll be with Matt Adair, and we're going to have a great Bible study dealing with one nation under God with a question mark. And we'll be talking about uh, the rise of Christian nationalism, but we're going to talk about this thing. It's going to be pretty heavy, boys. It's going to be pretty heavy. Tune in, 7 o'clock, we'll be here. Have your questions and everything already. Hey, I'm Dominique Johnson, the Urban CEO the Urban Bible Scholars. I want to say, if you want to live your best life, live a kingdom life. Double salute. See you.